All right. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for attending our webinar this afternoon entitled Introduction to the Internet of Things. So my name is Carlo Antonio Hau, and I will be your moderator this afternoon. So let me just remind everyone in this session that, uh, that this session will be recorded. So before we start our fun and learning, let's have a quick check in. So for everyone on this call, including those who are watching us live on Facebook right now, could you please say hi and shout out what organization you're from? Okay, so just click on the chat button below your screen and please make sure to send it to everyone and not just only the panelists. All right, I am seeing people from Cebu. Okay, that's good. We have people from Bulacan, from Batanga State University, from SLU, from Rizal Technology, and now some of the chat ko. So, all right, looks like we really have a good turnout this afternoon. Thank you so much, guys, for attending. But before we proceed, let us first introduce our company. So who is Trend Micro? So Trend Micro is a cybersecurity company that has been around for more than 30 plus years, leading the market with continuous innovations in virtualization, cloud, artificial intelligence, and IoT. Trend Micro has customers across the top Fortune 500, including eight of the top 10 global Fortune 500. So we are made up of 6,700 plus trenders who are passionate about making the world a safer and better place for everyone. So, and now for some reminders for our webinar. So here are the tools you can use to communicate with us. So here in your screen, you'll see both the chat and Q&A buttons at the bottom of your screen. So please use the chat section if you need to send us any feedback during the webinar. So the Q&A section is where you send in your questions and you can post them anytime throughout the webinar. But in order to manage your limited time, they will be answered at the end. So basic questions will be answered via chat and the others will be answered live during the Q&A. So please kindly include the slide number in your question so we can reply to them faster. So apart from the Q&A and um, chat buttons, we'll also use the upvote feature of Zoom. So if you have the same question, just click on the like button and the questions with the most number of likes will be prioritized during the Q&A portion. Our speaker will be joined by the other subject matter experts who will help respond to your questions. And you may also add more details to the question by using the comment button. Apart from, the, apart from that, we also have a polling question that, we will be post, that will be posted from time to time and a separate window will pop up to show the poll. So select your answer from the list and then click submit. So the results of the poll will be shown after. Just click close when you're done viewing the results. At the end of the webinar, you will automatically be routed to a survey form. So kindly take time to answer this short survey because your feedback is very valuable to us and will help improve our succeeding webinars. So that is the uh, certificate of a webinar attendance that we will be um, giving you. So those who answer the survey will receive a certificate of attendance for this webinar via email one week after this session. After the recording of this session, key takeaways and succeeding webinar schedules will be announced in our Facebook pages at Trend Micro Careers Philippines and Click Right PH. So you can also send us a message if you want us to request a, if you want to request a topic you would want us to cover in our next webinar. So please don't forget to like and follow our pages. But before we open our discussion for this afternoon, let me just remind you guys of our house rules and secure learning webinar series code of conduct. So the goal of secure learning is very much aligned with the trend micro vision, which is to make the world safe for exchanging digital information. So through secure learning webinar series, we aim to make it safe not only through technology, but by also providing a venue for a community that is open to all, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, disability, ethnicity, or religion. It is our goal to provide a positive virtual experience for all participants. 
We implore everyone to read through our code of conduct to understand what is expected of secure learning webinar participants. Possible consequences for untoward behavior are in secure learning's committee's sole discretion and the decisions of the committee will be final. Consequences, consequences breaches of this code of conduct may result in disqualification from participate, participating in future live and virtual events and from engagement across trend micro blogs, online forums, and social media channels. So now, time for you guys to meet our speaker this afternoon. Let me just read his profile. So here we have Mr. Donny Celestre, a licensed electronic engineer here in the Philippines and currently taking up his master's degree in electronics engineering at the Ateneo de Manila University. A core technology engineer, Donny provides insights on malware campaigns and he is also one of our subject matter experts discussing IoT. So Donny, are you ready? I'll stop sharing my screen now, okay? And you can start with your presentation. Okay, sure. Thank you, Carlo. Sure. Thank you, Donny. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar. So today's webinar is actually an introduction on the Internet of Things. So this is a very interesting topic since with the recent developments on technology like smartphones and smart devices and expansions of internet infrastructures and communications technology like WiMAX and 5G, without a doubt, the Internet of Things has a huge impact on education, communication, business, science, government, and humanity. It is clearly an important and powerful creation, especially this pandemic, where physical human interaction is very limited. And also, since our bandwidth is limited, I'll be turning off my camera to save bandwidth. Uh, let me just do that. Okay. And now, before we formally begin with the topic, let me take you to Bohol. So Bohol is an island in central Visayas, best known for its chocolate hills. But of course... Aside from viewing the sceneries and enjoying the food there, we have to arrange our accommodation for the stay. So in the room that we have reserved, which happens to be a smart home, it has several IoT devices. Here, I'll show a few of them. So first thing I noticed is this thing underneath the air conditioner. So one of the main instructions of the housekeeper there is to limit the use of air conditioner just from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. only during our stay. Now the question is, what is this? So is it a power supply or is it a controller or is it nothing important? So Carlo, can you help pull up the poll so we can see their answers? Sure, Dodgy. Here you go. And for those who are watching us live on Facebook, feel free to share your answers through the comment section. All right, Donny, from my screen, I am seeing a lot of people answering controller, and there are some who answer um, power supply. So that's an interesting answer from our audience. So I think that they are knowledgeable on this. Mm -hmm. So let me just end the poll now. Okay, thank you, Carlo. So uh, our audience answered controller. So actually, the answer for this is controller. So that's correct. So basically, this one is just a switch that ons or offs the air conditioner, which is time triggered and wirelessly controlled by the housekeeper. So as instructed, even if we forgot to turn off the, air the aircon, it will automatically turn off by itself. Now, on the part near the entrance, so I saw this seemingly mysterious item that blinks green and red, green and red. So what do you think is this? So Carlo, I need your help again for the poll. Here so you go, Danny. Okay, so is this a, is it a camera or is this a counter or is it a music box? Surprisingly, there are some who answered music box, but then again, a lot of people answered counter and some answered camera. Okay, so let me just end the poll now. Okay, so based on the answer from our uh, audiences, I can see that they have this level of um, imagination, which is very good for this topic. So actually the answer for this is a counter. So very good. So aside from the instruction that we have to turn off the air conditioner past 7 a.m. in the morning, a strict instruction is that only persons who are registered and the accommodation are allowed to enter the room. So with this setup, the keeper could keep track on the number of people inside the room and do necessary actions if that number has been exceeded. 
Well, this has been my experience and behold of having a seemingly smart home set up. So the question is, how does a smart home look like then? Now for a typical home, smart home setup, we can observe the presence of the following. So here is a picture of the floor area in a smart home. Here you can see the living room, the dining area, the bedroom, the comfort room, and the kitchen. Okay, so let's explore how can IoT technology help you live in a futuristic manner. So at the entrance, we can see an electronic keypad. So this one is voice activated and it has voice recognition. So you could say, unlock the door and the door magically unlocks without using your keys. Or you could say, lock the door and the door automatically locks. If it happens that you don't have the voice to speak, so paano tayo papasok? Okay, so yes, there is still the numeric keypad which you could enter the passcode to enter your home. Now, on the living area, we have a voice-activated home automation device. Ito yung nakikita nyo sa market like si Google and Alexa. So this device is capable of helping you control other devices. Like if you ask, hey Google, turn on the lights and the lights will turn on. Or if you say, Alexa, play my favorite music and that favorite music of yours plays along. Now you can imagine that the future is very technology driven as the magic happens if you just tell these devices what to do and they'll do it for you. So on the bedroom, we can see a router. This one connects all of your devices to the internet. Here we can also see a smart cleaner that automatically sweeps out the floor for dusts. And we can see a smart toy that can follow you via voice commands and a smartwatch that can detect your activities, which can communicate to the automation hub to send signals to the lamp to automatically turn off if you are already sleeping. On the bathroom, we can see an automated toilet that can disinfect itself if it feels like germs has accumulated already. And lastly, in the kitchen, a smart refrigerator that can automatically display recipes for you and order groceries for you. And for the coffee lovers out there, we have a smart coffee maker which can serve different flavors of coffee for you depending on your stress level as detected in your smartwatch. So all in all, these are the things in the internet of things. You can see now that the future is very technology driven given these things and the internet of things such as smart watch, smart desks, smart cars, and even smart refrigerators communicate with each other. And on the low level side of technology, here you can see these items. So yung, yung dito yung mga CCTVs, yung microcontrollers, yung Arduino and RPI natin, and our beloved Wi-Fi module who is responsible for the communications of these things in the Internet of Things. Okay, let's do another quick poll. So let's see how many of you owns an IoT device. So Carlo, let's pull up the poll again and see their answers. Sure, here you go. Okay, oh, so I see most of them own. So while waiting, Carlo, do you own an IoT device? Well, Donnie, you know, after you shared all the things in IoT, I feel like we really do own a lot of IoT devices at home. So yes, I do, I do. Okay. So, okay, let me end the poll now. I think we get the answers that we want already. Yes, so all right. So it looks like most of our, our, of our audience owns and manages an IoT device. So IoT, by definition, it is actually the interconnection via the internet of computing devices embedded in everyday objects, enabling them to send, receive, and process data. So a good question here is that, what is the difference between a computer and an IoT device. So here we have a comparison of Dell Optiplex 5050 versus a Netgear router. 
So here you can see the specifications for Dell Optiplex 5050. We have 3.4 gigahertz quad core, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 1 terabytes of storage. Where are, whereas for Netgear, we have 600 megahertz single core and 128 megabytes for both memory and storage. First thing that you would notice is the operating frequency of these two devices. You can see that the operating frequency for a computer is 3.4 gigahertz, while for IoT, that is only 600 megahertz. So what is the implication of that? The implication of that is that the the process that operates on the computer is much, much faster than an IoT device. Also, the, the memory and storage for a computer is relatively larger. As you can see here, that it has 8 gigabytes compared to 128 megabytes only. So looking at the specifications of this machine, we can, we can conclude that the router has a very limited hardware, and this can be generalized in almost all of IoT devices because each device only provides a specific functionality. But with this limitation, the power of IoT can be felt via its numbers. So meaning several IoT devices can work together to do something better than what a single computer can. So here you can see the capability of a computer. So here is the control panel. You can see here the system and security, the installed programs and installed services. And the counterpart for IoT devices is what we call a busy box. So a busy box is a multi-call binary that combines many common Unix utilities into a single executable. So basically, busy box contains a list of available commands to control your IoT device. And for the tech guys out there, here I'll show you the microcontroller. So this one is Arduino. So looking at the microcontroller in detail, you can observe that the, it has limited number of pins, both for analog and digital. We have PX and RX, the LED lights responsible for transmission and reception, which blinks up during communication. And of course, BCC to power up the Wi-Fi module. And going to the Wi-Fi module, you can observe here the squiggly copper lines at the top. So what do you think is that? Okay, so that actually is, so correct, that is an antenna. So on the left side of, of the Wi-Fi module is the chipset. Basically, this is the brain of the Wi-Fi module. And on the right side is the regulator, which manages the voltage and current levels of the Wi-Fi module during communication. So I have here another poll again. So Carlo, please help me with this. Sure. Okay, guys, on your idea, how many IoT devices are already out there in the world? There. Okay, so for Donny, I'm seeing a lot of our participants answered 7 billion plus, and there are some who answered a million plus. Some answered technology has yet to be implemented. <laughs> and for those who are watching us live on Facebook, so feel free to um, comment your answer in, answer in the comment section, okay? Okay. Let me just end the poll now, Donny. Okay, thank you, Carla. So actually, the answer for this is about 7 billion plus. So in fact, the technology that the te IoT technology has been around already as early as 1982, where a Coke machine from Carnegie Mellon University is connected to the internet to monitor if the machine is loaded with Coke or not. So basically, itong machine na to connected to sa internet para lang malaman nila kung may laman siyang Coke or wala. So... Imagine as early as 1982, and today, meron na tayong about 7 billion plus. So now we have the clear concept of what IoT is. Now, the question is how do they work? So, with the development of IoT, we have developed sensors that translate what we see 
what we smell, what we hear, what we taste, and what we feel. You can see here sound sensors for hearing, olfactory sensors for smell, acidity sensors for taste, camera for seeing, and touch sensor for feeling. So these sensors allows us to convert environment signals to electronic signals for us to teach the machines what we know. So given this ability, they are able to connect and they can mimic us to do intelligent decisions with automated actions. So let's discuss the layers of the IoT using the IoT security architecture. So the IoT security architecture is actually built up of four parts. So here we have the perception layer, the network layer, the support layer, and the application layer. So isa -isa natin. So the perception layer, also known as the, recogn the recognition layer, so this is the most basic level. So this level gathers all type of equipment and identifies the external world. So dito natin makita yung mga sensors, yung mga actuators. So in this example, nandito yung mga CCTVs, smart, smart bulbs, and smart thermometers. And this layer is responsible for converting analog signals to digital signals to pass on the next layer. So the next layer is the network layer. So this one is responsible for dependable broadcast of data. So kanina may question sa Q&A box natin. So the knowledge of networking is necessary to do IoT. So data in this layer, it's a network layer, data is broadcasted on numerous basic networks which could be either via mobile communications. So pwede tayong gumamit ng cellular technology and Bluetooth technology or we could also use wireless networks like Wi-Fi and WiMAX and satellite networks. For the support layer, the third layer, so this serves as a dependable platform for the application layer. So, okay, so sa question rin kanina, nandito natin, dito natin makikita yung mga servers, yung database, yung software, yung grid and cloud computing, and even yung machine learning. So, nandito siya sa support layer. Basically, all kinds of intelligent computing powers is present here in this layer. And on the topmost, the application layer, so this one delivers personalized services based on the user's needs. So ito yung nakikita nyo sa market. So like yung uh, smart TVs, uh, smart refrigerators, smart trash cans, and even yung mga smart faucets natin. But alongside this technology, cybersecurity is left behind. So we have concern in both security and privacy. So let's define kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng security and privacy. So security is the protection against unauthorized access, whereas privacy is the ability to protect sensitive information or personal identifi and identifiable information or yung PIIs natin. So I, I repeat, security is the protection against unauthorized access, whereas privacy is the ability to protect sensitive information. So for you not to forget, always remember this saying, you can't have privacy without security, but you can have security without privacy. I repeat, you can't have privacy without security, but you can have security without privacy. But all in all, this two should work together in tandem to protect our data. So let's discuss the interconnected era. So this one is basically preceded with four earlier eras. So namely the virus era, whose aim is to do software destruction. Next is the worm outbreak era. Ang main goal naman nito is to clog corporate networks. Next one is the web threat era. So this one, ang, ang goal nito is to incur major financial loss. Then the social attacks era, that is to have intellectual property theft. Ang concern natin this webinar is the interconnected era where the motivation of cyber criminals is to have control, control on your IoT device to make profit over them. Reach, so Internet of Things, the reach is via the Internet, of course. 
the behavior is multifunctional, meaning that the threat could work depending on which type of IoT device is targeted. And complexity, multi-platform, meaning it could work both in Linux and in Windows. So just to assess your learning, so medyo marami tayong uh, ideas and knowledges na nakuha ngayon. So let's have another poll. So uh, Carlo, please help me with this. So which layer can we find routers? Is it the perception layer, the network layer, or the support layer? Okay, the poll is up. Okay, there you go. Okay, wow. A lot of our uh, participants answered network layer, Donnie. Okay, and there, are some, there are a few who answered perception and support layer too. So I can see that uh, most of our audiences learned from the discussion earlier. Let me end the poll now, Donnie. Okay, thank you, Carlo. So actually, the answer for this is the network layer. So always remember that the IoT security architecture is composed of four layers. So the perception layer, the network layer, the support layer, and the application layer. So it's a perception layer, nandito yung sensors and actuators. So sensors yung input, actuators yung output. The network layer, nandito yung mga routers natin, okay? The support layer, ito yung computing layer natin, nandito yung machine learning, yung database natin, and everything. And application layer, ito yung mobile apps or yung mga devices na nakikita nyo sa market, like yung smart TVs, yung smart refrigerators, and alike na na-discuss ko earlier. So now, let's proceed with the current technology that we have right today. So because given all of these technological advancements, the, secure, the cybersecurity aspect of IoT is left behind. So discuss natin yung current technology na meron tayo. So the first one is the smart thermostat. So this one, this device is capable of controlling the room temperature. The issue here is that we can send crafted values of SSID details via Bluetooth to crash the device, making it inoperable. So, pwede tayo mag-craft ng network packet just to make this device inoperable. Next is we have here the smart home device. So, this is another kind of automation hub. So, an issue here is that if we can get a detail on this device or the address of this device and compute for the hash, we can maliciously validate any user to use this device. Next, we have here is the smart car panel. So it, this one can control various elements of the car, such as steering wheels, brakes, and wipers. And this can be done using a cellular device. But if it happens that the cyber criminal gained access to the cel cellular device, this can be life-threatening. Siyempre, during, nag, kunwari, nagda-drive ka, tapos yung control pala ay nas, ay nasa cyber criminal na. So, delikado yun. Next one, we have the uh, smart insulin, insulin pump. So, this one automatically injects insulin to a diabetic patient via doctor's control. An issue here is that it uses extremely simple communication which can capture to perform a replay-based attack. So kapag replay-based replay attack, so kukuha tayo ng network packet, i-analyze, tapos pwede natin i-resend. So a cyber criminal could repeatedly inject insulin or modify the, message, the dosage of insulin in which both instances are very dangerous. So next one is the smart gun. So this actually is electronic if we look inside. However, the issue is the the issue here is that the mobile app is exploitable and cyber criminals can manipulate the firing plug of the gun. So if you happen 
So if you happen to have these items, yung mga na-discuss ko earlier, make sure to patch them right away and install the latest version of firmware available to avoid exploitation. Okay? And going back to our smart home, yung smartwatch, uh, cyber criminals could use this to spoof other devices connected to the watch and steal user data. And for the uh, smart room cleaner, if this has been compromised, cyber criminals could steal information like the home's let layout. So of course, since this device has the ability to roam around the house, pwede niya rin monitor yung resident's activities. And the smart refrigerator, this can be exploited by the cyber criminals as well by ordering as much grocery as possible or even ruin the food by changing the temperature settings inside the refrigerator. And finally, for smart locks, so this one, so cyber criminals could take control of who gets in and who gets out in your home or your facility. So all in all, itong mga pinakita ko, if yung device is na-compromised, this is because of default weak guessable or common passwords used during the implementation of the IoT. So pwede rin yung insecure network setup where the communication channel is not encrypted. Like for example, in the insulin pump which uses plain text communication if nare-recall nyo kanina. Next one is the use of insecure or outdated components. So make sure to always patch so make sure to always patch and install the latest firmware available that is to avoid exploitation from cyber criminals. And lastly, the insufficient privacy protection, the lack of awareness of the user from IoT threats. So since nandito kayo ngayon, I hope na may natutunan kayo about this sa IoT threats natin. And all is well and good except that cybersecurity and user awareness since seems to be behind the rise of this technology and because of this so cyber criminals take the opportunity to have control and profit over iot devices okay so there are actually two common ways on how a cyber criminal can gain access to a device so knowing or being aware of this will help us protect our devices. So familiarity is necessary about this. So the first one is dictionary attacks or brute force attacks. So this one uses a combination of username and password to gain access to a device. So a good example here. So this is actually a source code from an actual IoT malware that uses this type of attack, the dictionary attack. So you can see here combinations of usernames and passwords, each of which are utilized by the cyber criminal. And in this case, this one actually uh, tries to gain access on a router, as you can see here in the box. So, so nag, nag gumamit siya ng brute force attack or ng dictionary attack with the combination of usernames and password to gain access to router. Next one is the use of exploits. So cyber criminals can take advantage of software vulnerabilities. So kung hindi kayo nakakapag-patch, they can take advantage of that to escalate privilege and execute commands. So better to always patch nga. And for wireless attacks, which can take different forms, we have side channel attacks, creep analysis attacks, and man-in-the-middle attacks. So, isa -isa natin. so for side channel, suppose we have built a system, a perfect system. So a side channel attack is not focused on the weakness of the implementation itself. So hackers can actually take advantage of the perfectness of your system by creating a, st a statistical model using timing information, power consumption, and electromagnetic leaks. So using this information, they can extract meaningful information, like to predict what hashing algorithm was used during the communication, or how long was the encryption key during, during the encryption. Now, 
these statistical models are in fact of high accuracy. So this is the side channel attack. Next one we have is the creep analysis attack. So in creep analysis, malicious actors can break down encryption schemes to determine and identify the context of information used during communications. So given, so parang pag during communications, if may packet, tapos pwede nilang ma-analyze yon and determine which encryption algorithm was used. Next one, the man in the middle attack. So this one basically introduces another connection aside from the original connection. So given this new connection, uh, a cyber criminal could eavesdrop in the connected device. So it actually mimics the original connection, but intercepts confidential information without breaking its integrity. So given the malicious ways of the cyber criminal, one could hack your smart TV, making it on inoperable or even worse, steal money from you. So we advise para hindi mangyari to sa inyo is to follow these best practices. So here we provide the best practices for you to follow to secure your IoT devices. So the first one, as I mentioned several times already so always check and update for latest patches so this is to cover up vulnerabilities found by researchers in your system and avoid exploitation performed by cyber criminals next disable features that you may not need so just use features of the IoT device that you are familiar with. One good practice that you could do now is to disable ports which are not used in your personal computers. So for you to do that, you can go to Windows Defender Firewall and select Advanced Settings. So under that, you can create a new inbound rule, select TCP and enter the port which you are not using. Then select block the connection if the port is not in use. Next, so change passwords at initial setup. So use complex passwords as much as possible. So it should have at least eight characters long, including upper and lowercase letters, numerals, and special characters. So if you can create complex passwords or masyadong makakalimutan to remember, one could create fast phrases. So fast phrases is actually a combination of words for your password. Make Just make sure that it has special characters and symbols. So fast phrases is actually harder to crack than a regular password. And looking back to our smart home, so the reality is that home users is not all familiar with the security of their smart devices. And not all smart devices have basic built-in security measures. So this gives you the responsibility to secure the way you set up and use the device. So one thing that you could do is to set up your smart devices for security. Check all your device's default settings and know how to modify them will enable you to customize the features that best suit your needs while keeping your privacy and personal security intact. Next, secure your home router. Imagine that the, this router is actually the gateway to all of the interconnected devices in your home. So it's where all the internet traffic which passes through. So you have to guard this very well. Some attackers are able to compromise home routers since many models come with def default credentials. So this is why it's always important to create a strong router password right after you've set it up. You can also review your device's log history. So for instance, yung mga CCTVs natin, it can allow users to view the history of IP addresses that have access its feed. So by going through the logs, you can find out if strangers have been keeping an eye on you. And lastly, protect your smartphone. 
So since a number of IoT devices can be controlled through mobile devices via an app, your smartphone also needs protecting. And again, always remember to think before you click. Visiting sites which are not safe could lead to malware and thus infecting your smartphone and other connected devices in your network. It is important to have the safety of your IoT devices starting with you. So that's the end of the webinar on the introduction of the Internet of Things. So this is actually just the beginning of the topic under Industry 4.0. So thank you for listening. And now let's proceed for the Q&A. All right. Thank you so much, Donnie, for that um, informative presentation. So now time for the Q&A, everyone. So our subject matter experts will join our speaker in answering the questions from our audience. So please be reminded that we will only answer inquiries within the scope of our expertise. So for those who are watching us live on Facebook right now, feel free to share your questions through the comment section. So let's start with the first question that has the most votes. Okay, Donnie? So the first question is, what are the common cases of attacks of, I of IOTs? Yes, the common the, the common cases of attacks of IOTs is as I mentioned earlier is they use brute force attack to gain access to the IoT devices. So after that, they can use that to they can use that access to the IoT to become part of the botnet. So uh, IoT threats is a separate topic which is very interesting also. All right, thank you so much, Donnie. We also have another question here. Is there an application available to monitor all IoT devices that active and operating to have an IoT devices network system visibility? Uh, yes, actually we have a product in trend. So this that is a home network security and you can view your logs using that app. Okay, we, uh, we hope you get to answer that question. There's another one done here. Um, he says, I heard you mentioned about encryption algorithms. Which en encryption algorithm do you find most common and most effective in IoT devices? Okay, th that one, uh, we can use RSA where we can have the private key and the public key. So you can keep a copy of the private key making it not known to the public. So I can say that RSA is very effective for the encryption scheme. All right, so here's another one, Bonnie, for you. Um, I have many accounts for different websites and I used the suggested passwords by LastPass or Google itself. Is that recommended or safe? So actually that is safe, but you could also use or utilize the use of password manager for you to help in accessing those websites. Okay, here's another one, Donnie. Um, does IoT devices support Multi-factor multi authentication. Yes, you can you can set that you can set that up. So that depends on your setting. So if especially if you are the engineer, so you can uh, uh, provide multi-factor authentication uh, in the network itself. Okay, uh, I believe we still have enough time to answer some questions, Nodoni. Um, here's another one. Um, can can Internet of Things replace the need for human intelligence? So actually, IoT is very good. So it will not replace human intelligence, but it actually helps. So at the end of the day, IoT is there for us to help humans, but human intervention is still necessary for the Internet of Things. All right, that's a very interesting question, Donnie. You know, and whoever asked that, I hope you get to answer your question. So, Donnie, here's another question, man. So, may I know what programming language typically used for IoT devices? Uh, okay. So, if you are trying to learn microcontrollers, so you can study uh, Arduino and uh, Raspberry Pis. So, for Arduino, you can learn how to do JavaScript. And for our pies, you can learn how to program using Python. All right. Um, 
Okay, here's another one, Donny. There's a participant uh, who asked us, how do we know which ports to close in Windows Firewall naman? Okay, you can look up on the uh, internet on the ports which are not commonly used. So, yung, commonly, yung mga commonly used natin na ports is yung sa HTTP, like port 80, port 8080. So, yung mga uh, aside from doon, yun yung mga pwede natin i-block. Thank you, Donnie. Here's another one. Wow, I am very surprised that we are getting a lot of questions because this one, sabi niya, what can we do if the IoT on our home has been infiltrated by the hacker? What preventive measures can we do during the attack? So one preventive measure that you could do is to disconnect your network from the, from the internet first. So after that, you can do an investigation on which IoT devices are affected. Then make sure to update the firmware and change the passwords for more complex ones. Okay. So here naman, um, we got a question from Facebook. Sabi niya, what will you choose, sir, Donnie? Will you, will you choose a device that is connected to internet or a standalone device that can't connect to internet? Actually, uh, I happen to have uh, several IoT devices here in my home. So, ang disadvantage lang is kapag walang internet, hindi sila gagana. So, yun lang yung ano. I prefer to use... Uh, devices with internet kung may stable internet connection ka but if you don't have so better yun na lang nawala mm. okay ito naman this is kind of like a tricky question donny we all know that philippines doesn't have a very good bandwidth compared to other countries how will it affect the implementation of iot here in the philippines Yes, that's actually true. So yung uh, internet connection natin dito sa Philippines is not that very good. But uh, there are uh, movements or developments on the infrastructure, the communications infrastructure. So if you hear that 5G is already here, so 5G can support faster uh, communications by providing lower bandwidths. Okay. So, here's another one, Donnie. Ang daming questions na natanggap natin this afternoon. So, I is there I'm... any chance that there will be a great decrease in employment rate if businesses and companies buy technology like IoT instead of hiring and letting people work for them? Because, you know, um, technology is really growing every day. Uh, yes. So, yung automation ng IoT, ito yung uh, nakakapag-help sa business. So, there are there could be a possibility in a decrease on the employment, but uh, looking at the brighter side of IoT, it can help us automate and uh, give more, uh, what do you call this, efficient work for the company. Okay. Here's another question, Donnie, for our teachers naman. Someone asked us, if we are educators and teaching IoT, what will you suggest to teachers to use such as what apps and simple devices for demo purposes? Okay, so if this is a face-to-face -face, uh, seminar, like in case, so you can uh, show how to uh, program a microcontroller by using sensors and then that sensors will uh, capture environment signals, then translate to digital signals, then do the processing. So basically, that one is what you can uh, show to the students for them to learn what is IoT. Then after that, you can uh, share the network layers, so the perception layer, the network support and application, and make sure to also provide the best practices for them. Okay, I, uh, we hope we get to answer that question, no, mga teachers. So now, here's another question for you, Donny. Um, sabi niya dito, can firewall device secure my IoT device? Yes, actually. So firewall is very helpful. So that is yung, yan yung first layer of defense natin for, from the internet, uh, internet attacks. So using firewall is very recommended. Okay, so here's another one, Amad. So, how can we know 
if our device are being attacked by man in the middle, especially for those who are not familiar with it? Okay, so one thing that you could do is to check for processes in your computer, for example. So if there is a process that is not familiar to you, you can check on that and check for IP addresses. So for IoT devices, one you, uh, you could do is to review the logs. So if you notice something different on the list of IPs and you are not familiar on which IP is that and that and that one does not belong in your network. So the investigation could start there. Okay, here's another one, Donnie. Thank you so much for those people who are asking us on Facebook. Huh? So here, here's uh, from, our, um, from Facebook. Sir Donnie, have you tried experimenting some of your IoT devices to prevent and protect yourself from an attack of Red Hats? Uh, actually, I did. So during... Uh, uh, what do you call this, an event here in Chan Micro, we demonstrated how to do rip, uh, replay-based attack. So there uh, we showed how it works and how to prevent against replay-based attacks. Okay. Um, I think we can still accommodate some questions. Oh, there's, here's another one, actually. Do you still re recommend IoT in homes, even though its security integrity is a little questionable? Uh, yes, of course. You just have to do the best practices to avoid exploitation from cyber criminals. Uh, IoT is very helpful, very helpful, especially during these times. So automation is very recommended and you just have to follow the, the best practices like uh, using a complex password, updating patches, and all of that. And I know that IoT is very helpful. Okay, we have two more questions uh, from Facebook, Donnie, ha? and one is from sure. Mr. Wendell Moya. His question is, what one factor would most accelerate the benefits of the Internet of Things? What factor? Uh, can, can you... Please repeat the, the question. I'm sorry. Um, what one factor would most accelerate the benefits of the Internet of Things? Okay. So I think the, the answer for that is the Internet speed, I think, if I get the, correct, the, the question right. So the Internet is one of the most uh, considerable factor that you have to consider in implementation of IoT because that the internet's uh, IoT relies on internet and internet speed is very critical on IoT devices. Okay, so I here's another question right. from from Facebook from Miss Jaren Spelina. So her question is, how can I know what port to disable on my PC? Won't uh, won't some apps will be affected if I block the port that some of it does using? Ah, yes, actually, you uh, as I mentioned earlier, you could look up on the internet on which port is best to block. Uh, like, for example, if you are not using SMB, you can block the ports 25, or if you are not using the, uh, any other services, you can check for the equivalent port number of that and block them. Right. I think we still have enough time to answer some of the questions since marami tayong natanggap sa ating Q&A. Oh, I, um, I think they are very interested in the topic. Yeah. Which is very really good. Okay. They are very interested. So, um, here's another one. Um, sabi niya dito, since we are talking about security and privacy, even if we succeeded having full security in our gadgets and accounts, do you still do you still believe that on future technology there are still hackers that will soon provide full counter to our securities? Actually, I believe on that. So, uh, cyber criminals uh, actually has their own technology as well, and they keep track or there is actually an armed struggle between uh, the good guys and the bad guys, and. I think the good guys is winning this time. Okay, the questions keep on coming lang talaga, no? So, another question for you, Donnie, is how strong is the end-to-end -end encryption of IoT devices? Actually, that depends on the setup of, of the engineer. So, if, a, if he has... Uh, if he has implemented two-factor authentication, that is very good. But if he uses a uh, plain text communication, so that is not that good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You know what, Donnie? Akala ko last question na kanina sa Facebook eh. But then someone sent us an interesting question from Gabriel okay, sure. Marzo. Sabi niya, what do you regard as the most interesting use of the Internet of Things? Ah, uh, yes. Home automation. So, ang setup ko, sige, ito na lang yung setup ko dito sa bahay. So, uh, what I have here is a Google Home and a smart bulb and a smart switches. So, for example, uh, during my meeting, if I want to dim the lights, I can ask Google to dim the lights for me without going to uh, the switch or I could also ask Google to turn off the electric fan for me. And I think that is the very, uh, uh, what do you call this? The best use case of IoT. Okay. Here's another one naman sa Q&A section natin. Sabi niya, how can you properly secure your network in order for your IoT devices more secured from hackers? Yes. So as I mentioned during the lecture, so dun sa best practices natin, you can implement the use of uh, encryption schemes for the network itself, use uh, authentication schemes, and what do you call this? Uh, implement the use of complex password and patch vulnerabilities. All right. I think... We are able to answer a lot of questions. And last question, Donny. I think I this is going to be our last for um, this um, webinar. So, what is the most common exploit used against IoT devices? Ah, uh, yes. The most common uh, exploit is what you the buffer flow, the buffer overflow. So, in buffer overflow, they use uh. Uh, strings, long strings, just to access the memory of the the executable memory of the IoT devices, making them uh, gain control of that device. All right, I think we are able to cover a lot of questions this afternoon, Donnie. And thank you so much for that very informative answers, ha. Huh? Okay. Okay. So thank you, Donnie, um, for for um, sharing with us um, stuff, um, things about the IoT, and thank you to our speaker, you and subject and our subject matter experts for that informative and awesome presentation. So guys, to know more about IoT, you can also check out our IoT research page under Trend Micro Threat Intelligence Center. So you can scan the QR code, the one you see at the bottom right of your screen, and um, that will direct you to the page. So I would also like to remind everyone who's watching us right now that our next webinar topic would be about women in IT. So in celebration of Women's Month, please visit our Facebook page, Trend Micro Careers Philippines for additional announcements. So the key takeaways for this session and access to the recording will also be posted there. So please don't forget to like and follow this page to stay updated. So for survey and feedback, Kindly take a snapshot, a snapshot of this QR code and answer the survey after leaving the session to get your certificate of attendance. Scan the QR code, the one you see at the left side of your screen. So once again, this is Carlo Howe, and thank you so much for this lovely afternoon. I hope you learned a lot.